Hello everyone, welcome to Theme Park Life, my name is MJ and today I'm going to be talking about video games. How I got into video games, their impact on my life, and sort of the biggest memories that I have that revolve around video games. I've taken some time and gone through my entire life and trying to plot um, the different years and different events in video games that have impacted my life. So, I'll try and go through this as quickly as possible. Yeah. That's, that, this is the intro to the video, and now the video starts. <laughs> so I should say, with these very early dates, I can't be 100% certain on exactly when they occurred, but it's, it's going to be roughly right. So I am 33, I was born in 1987, and the sort of first memory that I have, or memories around video games, is I think maybe from when I was around 3 or 4. So I'm, I'm thinking this was around 1990. My dad had a Commodore 64, I should say we, we as a family had a Commodore 64 I guess. Um, so we played Ghostbusters, now Ghostbusters was the, the main game that I remember from that. Uh, I also remember a um, a game that I think was called Swag, where you sort of go into people's houses and he's got like a, a bag and uh, I remember the theme tune. Um, and also after speaking to my sister about this video uh, and planning it a little bit, she uh, suggested that the bear game, can't remember what it was, but she remembered the uh, the tune was like, if you go down to the woods today, but obviously in Commodore 64, uh, sort of, uh, um, and that, that made me remember things as well. But that was my very first interaction with uh, video games. Um, then I think probably around 1991, uh, we got a Game & Watch, so a Donkey Kong Game & Watch, or at least maybe we had it before. This might have all been around the same time here. Uh, but we got the Donkey Kong Game & Game Watch, where you hop from uh, along the bottom row, you hop on the vines, and then you've got to get to the end or something. Um, very fun, very simple, but again, one of the first things that... Um, one of the first pieces of exposure I had to video games. So 1992 to 1993 was around the time that my sister and I had a Game Boy. Uh, again, I, I needed to enlist her help for this bit because it's so early, I, you know, I only have faint memories. But we actually had a Game Boy each. Uh, I remember that we had a magnifying glass for the Game Boy, uh, which had a light on as well so you could play it in bad light. Uh, and we had things like Tetris, Super Mario Land, I remember the Crash Dummies game. And my sister had the uh, Kirby's Pinball game, which I absolutely loved. And to this day, I love the artwork, actually. It's been really, really cool. So up until this point, I think it's fair to say everything has been pretty casual. Um, nothing crazy or outlandish, or I wouldn't I wouldn't have called myself a video game fa fan. A, a video game fan. I wouldn't have called myself a video game fan at this stage of my life. Because I was sort of like five. So I didn't really know what that was. Probably just picking my arsehole or whatever. Um, anyway, but in I think it was 1994. Because this is when the game came out. Um, we were around a family's family friend's house um, and they were playing Donkey Kong Country on the SNES and I remember thinking oh my god this looks incredible I don't even remember if I played it it you know it's so long ago um, I can see sort of like the room the living room in my mind and I think it was in the evening because it was dark um, you know and I remember where we were who, who we were with um, but I don't even remember if I played it but I saw it and I was consumed by it because at the time Donkey Kong Country was such a leap forward for video games. I'm not sure if at the time I'd actually seen a SNES before. I don't remember. I don't think I'd like played Mario or any or other than Super Mario Land. I don't think I'd played like SNES Mario or NES Mario or anything like that. I certainly hadn't played a NES. Um, so I saw this and I, it just blew my mind. I thought it looked incredible. Um, yeah and that is what set me on the path. So I believe it was in 1995 that we actually got a SNES ourselves. Um, it was around this time that my parents divorced as well, so my personal life became a bit more fractured. Um, but we got a SNES, so you know, parents divorced, bad, got a SNES, good. Um, so yeah, we got a SNES, we had things like, uh, like I remember getting Super Mario Kart, and I think it, I think it was a present to my sister and I. Because uh, I, I vaguely recall opening it on uh, a bed, but that might have been a little bit later, actually. Anyway, 
We had a SNES, it was definitely around this time, um, because I was really excited to play Donkey Kong Country 2. We had things like Super Mario All-Stars, so I remember playing that a lot, with, which included Super Mario World, it was that version. We had Street Fighter 2, all this sort of thing, so I remember playing a lot of these games and really enjoying them. Um, but it was Donkey Kong Country 2 that I was really excited for. I believe at this time I had played now Donkey Kong Country, but I was just so excited for number 2. And that came out in 1995, so that's why I think it was around this time. It might have been slightly later. So we move on a year to 1996. Now, uh, I remember getting like the Nintendo magazine when Donkey Kong, when it featured Donkey Kong Country 2. So that's why I do think I got probably got Donkey Kong Country 2 on launch, and I definitely got Donkey Kong Country 3 on launch because Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3 came out in subsequent years. Um, and yeah, I was so excited, so, so, so excited. And by this point, I absolutely loved my snares and absolutely loved Donkey Kong. So yeah, playing Donkey Kong Country 3, I remember where I was. I, I, at this point in my life, I lived in uh, North Baddersley, which is in Hampshire. I absolutely loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, and we had some friends that were next door neighbours, or a few doors down at least. Uh, and I went, went, went round theirs, and this is when I first experienced a PlayStation for the first time. I saw, it was a, really only one game that I specifically remember from this time, and it was uh, Mortal Kombat Trilogy. And I remember it scared the youngest member of the family, so we weren't really allowed to play it. Um, but I remember thinking, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, but I didn't come back to PlayStation for some time. So 1997 rolls around, and by this time, by this time, by this time, I'd been a, a video game fan. I, I'd, I'd be what I would call a video game fan for several years, I guess. Uh, and very much a Nintendo guy. I think around this time, I was very much aware of Sega. I don't actually remember, like, ever having played... A Mega Drive though, I like. I think I probably did play a Mega Drive at some point. Um, there were maybe some next door neighbours in Bognor where I uh, where I previously lived uh, that probably had one, but I don't explicitly remember coming into Sega too much uh, until a little bit later in life. Um, but I was a Nintendo guy by this stage, and 1997 is when the Nintendo 64 came out. And uh, by this point we'd moved to Romsey, so we are in a house that we are in for a good few years by this point. And I was extremely lucky and fortunate to get a Nintendo 64 for Easter. Um, yeah, crazy present to get for Easter, you know, when most people get eggs and whatnot. And, you know, looking back on it now, I, I just consider myself like quadruply lucky because we were not a, a rich family, far from it. Um, so, and, and you know, my mum was a single mum at this point point um dad lived a, a couple of hours away and yeah it's, cr it's crazy to think that um i wanted a nintendo 64 so badly that my mum got me one for easter that's just really really crazy um but yeah i was super excited for it and super excited for mario 64 super mario 64 which i loved played loved and yeah this is when i fell in love with my nintendo 64 so we move on to 1998 now, and this is where some, some additional memories come in. So I remember playing Goldeneye around a friend's house. My friend had this massive, massive house. So I have great memories in there. And uh, interestingly, he had uh, just a giant playroom. And this is when I remember first properly playing Sonic for the first time, like Sonic and Knuckles and whatnot. I uh, absolutely loved the design of Sonic and Knuckles, by the way. Um, I loved the logo for it, and I loved Knuckles as a character. So that was cool, and I enjoyed playing them. I've never been a Sega guy, though. So um, whilst it was cool to play them, it, it, it's never been, oh my god, amazing, and whatnot. Um, but also in 1998 we played things like, I think Snowboard Snowboard Kids was out by this time because uh, my sister and I enjoyed playing that on the N64 and there was a significant event that happened in our life around this time actually. We uh, we got, I think my, my mum had gone on holiday at the same time that we had gone on holiday, sorry when I say we, my mother had gone on holiday and separately myself and my sister Emma went on holiday with my dad or our dad. Um, and we got back first, I think, uh, and we went in, or got into the house, and like the VCR was gone, and we were like, that's weird, why, why, they've taken the VCR with them, on holiday, that's strange. Um, then we went into the kitchen, and the washing machine was gone, and we were like, ah, oh, this is fucked up. Um, and yeah, obviously it transpired that we'd uh, been burgled, which was pretty shit. Um, 
and so my like I think my TV was yeah my TV was definitely gone TV I had an old TV as well honestly not worth stealing what we're in 1998 ish um, and I still didn't have a remote TV uh, I had a button clicker so yeah ridiculous thing to steal um, but yeah N64 that was gone all the games gone um, annoying uh, insurance did cover it though so we did get all the games and one uh, sort of happy anecdote from around this time is that um, so my sister and I liked playing Snowboard Kids however she would play it uh, too much to my liking as uh, as her sibling uh, so I actually hid it one day and hid Snowboard Kids in a book in my bookcase then we were burgled and we were like oh my god we've lost all the games um, but then um, shortly after we were burgled I was going through my bookcase and I found Snowboard Kids so I was like oh my god we can play it again um, completely forgot about that so um, yeah almost sort of accidental insurance fraud which is annoying but fine um, but yeah interesting uh, being burgled was horrible though man uh, there was like a footprint on my bed of where a burglar had like gone up to get whatever and yeah nasty stuff so my heart goes out to anyone who has been burgled including myself really a bit of self uh, self pity there so it was around 1999 that I think I got a PlayStation myself I don't even know or I don't remember why I wanted one because there was there was not a single game on PlayStation that I remember fondly um, yeah I don't really even know what I played Destruction Derby a bit uh, I, I don't even remember which games I had um, very interesting I think I just got a normal PlayStation though it wasn't a PS1 so I've just seen a very scary spider outside that's terrifying Def definitely outside so that's good um, yeah but Cool. whatever got a playstation good um the the really significant thing this year was pokemon pokemon red specifically came out um i was crazy excited for it i, I think i got it for christmas um yeah i was so excited for pokemon and what i find so interesting about that is pokemon was an original game boy game now if you've rewind seven years or something yeah go back to like when I was I was think I was talking about 1992 being when I had the Game Boy and was playing with it uh, yeah the console generations these days last roughly five years we're talking about a ten more than ten year old system by this point and I was playing a brand new game on it in 1999 that's absolutely crazy um, but it was so good it was a massive game felt really ambitious and it was just it was, I think, looking back, Donkey Kong Country 2, or, or Donkey Kong Country is my favourite franchise of all time. But looking back, I'm not sure I was as excited for the Donkey Kong game as I was for Pokemon. I was absolutely consumed by Pokemon, and uh, I was not disappointed. I absolutely loved Pokemon Red. It, it blew my mind, and I couldn't understand how it was achievable on a Game Boy on such an old console. Such a brilliant, brilliant game. So yeah, that was 1999. In the year 2000, there were some more changes in my life. So about halfway through the year, I moved from Romsey to Chesham. Uh, and I've stayed in roughly Chesham area since... Uh, um, Chesham is in Buckinghamshire, and I've, I've been in Buckinghamshire since then. Um, anyway, we moved to Chesham. Um, and I, th I think it was probably just before I moved to Chesham, I got a... It was probably for my birthday, actually, so it would have it would have probably been February. Um, I got a Game Boy Color, so I got a green Game Boy Color, and I remember where we bought it from. I was with uh, my father, and we bought it from W H Smiths of all places, or, or sorry, W H Smith, not Nando's. Um, you wouldn't say Nando's. Don't say W H Smiths. Um, w H Smith. Uh, pff, horrifying prices for games. Don't know why we would have bought it from there weird but yeah i remember going in there physically buying it along with r type r type um dx was the only game i got for it at the time and yeah it sort of blew my mind playing actually yeah blew my mind playing it in color but then just this is something that didn't make it onto my notes uh, i just thought it did play a lynx probably around seven or eight years before um, I think that was around the, the same family where I saw Donkey Kong Country. I think I probably played a Lynx. And that sort of blew my mind back then, to be honest. I don't know if you've seen them since. They are unwieldy beasts. I think they're about this big and they're a portable console. Uh, no, they're, they're probably something like that. But they are massive. Anyway, yeah, I just thought that. Uh, but yeah, got that. Fine. Not too much else to say in the year 2000. 
2001 was a big year because this was the year that Pokemon Gold came out, the sequel to Pokemon. And this I, I was I was just inconsolably excited for. Now, uh, unfortunately, I have to uh, I have to tell a shameful story. Now, this is uh, this is one of the most shameful, horrible memories I have because. Um, um, sadly, my mother passed away in 2007, so I can't apologise to her for my behaviour. Um, but, uh, basically, I wanted Pokemon Gold really badly. Um, at this stage in our lives, we were sort of poorer than ever. As I say, we, we were not a wealthy family growing up, but this, this was a... This was roughly around the time where we, at one point, we didn't actually have any housing. Um, so we, we lived in sort of like a halfway house, or just after this is when we lived in a halfway house. But anyway, I digress. Um, I was a little wanker the, 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 on the eve of the release of Pokemon Gold, so I said I really wanted it, and I think my mother must have said that um, she wasn't gonna buy it for, for me, or, or something like that. Um, and I was just a little, I was a little arsehole, little absolute prick. I was um, uh, whinging, just w literally, I, I literally, I'm so ashamed to say it, like I say, it is, it is literally the most shameful memory that I have. But I basically whinged myself to to sleep that um, evening, like just in bed, bitching and moaning like a little prick, like a little spoiled, horrible boy. Um, so yeah, annoying. Um, anyway, I think by the morning I'd probably got over it or whatever because I I went to school and whatnot. Um, and at the time, my mum worked in a um, like an ornament store. So like crystal and ornaments and whatnot. Um, and because we live, we, so we actually lived above the cancer research charity shop in Chesham. Um, and the, the place where my mum worked was, uh, I think it was called Hadley. That was literally just a few doors down. So instead of me taking the house key to school and getting it lost or whatever, I used to go into um, the shop after work and pick up the key from her. Um, and on this particular time, uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm digressing loads here, but it's it's a vivid memory and it is important. It is an important memory to me, so that's why I'm telling it in quite de quite specific detail. Um, where the fuck was I? Um, so I'm now going to go into childcare arrangements for me. Um, I see my dad every three weeks. Uh, that would be an overlap of different uh, things. So every three weeks, he would come to Chesham for the day on a Sunday and then three weeks after that I would go to his in Worthing for the weekend. Uh, three weeks after that he'd come here, three weeks after that uh, I'd go there. So it's like a six week interlocking pattern, right? And on this particular day, which was a Friday, I was due to go to his. Anyway, went to Hadley after school to pick up the key from mum um, and so I went in and she was at the till and just I saw a copy of the game behind of Pokemon Gold behind the till sitting there and I think I lost my shit. I think I like ran around and gave her a hug and whatnot. Uh, grabbed the key and was just like just like delighted that I had it. Um went home. I don't remember if I played it straight away. Uh, I think dad used to used to come I think he used to come quite soon. I think he used to pick me up around half four, something like that. So it's quite soon after school. Um, and I think I think by that point I'd probably already started playing it, or I started playing it in the car. And I imagine <laughs> I was just like the least sociable person in the world that weekend. Definitely played it on the way to his. Um, we used to grab like a Burger King or whatever on the way. Uh, definitely played it in Burger King. Uh, and I think I spent, apart from the activities that we were doing, which we probably went to Brighton Pier or something like that. Um, I would have played it all weekend, and I did play it all weekend, and uh, I cannot say, it is probably, whilst it, it's, it, you know, it's frustrating because it's preceded by that horrible behaviour of me, which is, is uh, like I say, the, the, is like the most shameful memory I have. Um, it is actually the best video game memory that I have after that as well, because, well, first of all, it shows the undying kindness of my mother. Um, absolute saint that she was, not I believe in saints or, or, or Christ, uh, Christianity, any religion, um, you know, spirituality. Ah, it's, end the video, it's stupid. Um, so it says that, and but also just the game was so good, the game was so good. So the weird thing about Pokemon Red, um, at least me playing it on a Game Boy, is it wasn't in colour. 
animation and the graphics are by, certainly by today's standards obviously bad. Um, the sprite work was fairly nice um, but the significant jump in quality between that and Pokemon Gold and Silver is just astronomical because first of all they really had nailed down the look of the Pokemon. They, they sort of refined all the sprites and they looked pretty much how they look now. The, but it was in colour. We were seeing these Pokemon in colour for the first time. Um, not only that, in this video game, when you complete the game, you basically unlock the first game. You get to go back to Pallet Town. So it's just, uh, or Kanto, I should say. Um, it was just unbelievable. It was just absolutely unbelievable. Brilliant, brilliant game, and still one of my favourite gaming memories of all time. Um, I'm not sure I ever enjoyed a game more when playing it for the first time. Also in 2001, I think the Game Boy Advance must have cut, must have, well, the Game Boy Advance did come out in 2001. I must have got it that year. I must have done, because I think I got it pretty early. Um, and it, looking at all the games that came out afterwards, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense how some of them landed. So I think I must have got a Game Boy Advance. Maybe I got it for Christmas or something that year. So in 2002, the GameCube came out. Um, now I think with this one, I, I, maybe I saved up some pocket money or something and, and got this, but I did get it. Um, it, it I can't help but f I can't help but feel like how spoiled I was um, because, like I say, we were not we were not a wealthy family, so I don't understand how I got all of this stuff. Um, but good, brilliant. Um, yeah, got a GameCube, got it in black. Uh, I think the launch games I got were like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and Rogue Leader, which was brilliant. Absolutely loved, absolutely loved both of them. Um, played to death and uh, to this day I think the GameCube controller is still my favourite. Um, this is also the year, I think, that the PlayStation 2 came out. Now my best friend Mike, uh, his mum worked at Choices, which is like a, a rental store. So uh, we actually got to play the PS2 early before it came out because of uh, that was one of the perks of, of, of that uh, job sort of thing. Uh, so we got to play that, which was really awesome, really cool. Um, and so my, my, basically, Mike was the was the PlayStation guy, and I was the Nintendo guy. Um, but round his, I remember playing things like Time Splitters and um, games like that. And yeah, it was it was great. This was a very good time for video games. We were playing a lot of video games around this time. So there were some really key things that I think happened around 2003. It might have been a little bit before as well. It might have been 2002. Um, but in 2003, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 came out. And I think I got that pretty soon after launch because I was a fan of the first game, which I know I didn't touch upon. Um, but I was a fan of the first. Uh, and also, this is around this time, the, the sort of early 2000s, is when I became really big into theme parks. Um, Started going, I first ridden an upside down roller coaster, I think probably 2000 or 2001. Um, so I, I got really heavily into it um, and absolutely loved Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. And to this day, it's definitely one of my favourite games of all time. Another key thing happened as well in that um, a social element of my life growing up in my teenage years was the comic book store in Chesham. Um, it was originally called Fanboy Comics, later it became Action Comics. Um, we became really friendly with the owners. Um, they played, uh, or, or rather, they set up um, a Hero Clicks club on a Tuesday. So, Hero Clicks is this tabletop miniatures game um, with like Marvel and DC and all that sort of thing. Uh, and we became massive fans of that. So, we all played that. So, we went to Hero Clicks club every Tuesday. Um, and the, the brilliant, brilliant thing about this store, and yeah, you know, I made so many friends through this through this store. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, one of the amazing things is that they had a TV and GameCube under the, under the till, and on um, Hero Clicks Club, we would after the club had had ended, we would go there. There'd be like maybe five to ten people that would stick around, um, and we would all play Super Smash Bros. Melee, um, and it was just like. <sighs> Just brilliant, just absolutely so much fun. I remember sitting on the floor in this cramped comic book store. Um, we're on this small TV under the under the uh, till, but yeah, I wouldn't change it. It was it was absolutely brilliant, and there were it was just a just an amazing amazing time. Like I say, I made such good friends um, through that store. That it's a lovely memory. Around 2004, nothing too major, I would say. I, I mean, I remember I got I think Need for Speed Underground 2 around this time. Probably got it for a Christmas, maybe Christmas 2003, or maybe it was Christmas 2004. Anyway, I was definitely playing that around this time. Um, also remember, by this point, Mike and I have entered college. Um, 
so we, we would have just been in the first year of college around this time and I remember playing Pokemon Fire Red on the way to uh, Teesside University because we were uh, tossing up whether to go to university around this time so starting to look a little bit at that um, and also this is when Grand Theft Auto San Andreas came out uh, San Andreas we played a little bit but actually it was probably the year before was a bit more significant because we played uh, Vice City we played Vice City to death so yeah great game series so in 2005, I think there were a couple of quite key things that happened. First of all, the Nintendo DS came out, um, and uh, we, uh, by this point, I was, I think I was working by this point, I was working at Waitrose, uh, and at the comics, comic book shop as well, actually. Um, so I had my own income, and I believe off my own back, I, this is probably the first console I bought off my own back, um, I got a Nintendo DS on launch. Uh, so it was actually lunch break at college, Mike and I went along to HMV, we both bought one, um, and then that day we went back to college and uh, in key skills we were just, instead of sort of listening to the tutor and whatnot, we were just being naughty. Uh, so we were literally, we had our DS's under the desk and we're just sending picto chats to each other. <laughs> um, so that's a nice memory. Also, I think this is the year that I got an Xbox 360 as well. I remember playing it around Daniel Sun's house. And I can't remember what exactly I played, but I was like, hmm, I really like this, this is really cool. With like the, the triggers on the controller, I was like, this is decent. I don't really want to be missing out on this. So I think this is the year that I got a, uh, an Xbox 360. If, sorry, I'm just checking my notes. If it wasn't 2005, then it, it, was, it was around this time. In 2006, um, this is around the time where I sort of discovered or slash was using a shop more in Aylesbury. Um, called Another Level. Now, Another Level... Actually, 2006, let me think. Two f yeah, so this is also the... I believe this is also the year that I started work. Three to four, four to five. Yeah, this will be the year that I started work as well. So I, I think I did this on my lunch break at work, actually. I, I worked at HBOS, Halifax Bank of Scotland, in the customer services team uh, in Aylesbury. Um, and yeah, we'd, you go to another level, a video game store, including imports, uh, and they sold games early, crucially. Or rather, sorry, they sold import games. Um, so Pokemon Diamond came out early in America, so they got it in, and man, I was so excited for that game. Um, interesting, one, one thing I didn't mention from, that would have been from a few years prior, I didn't actually play Pokemon uh, Ruby slash Sapphire slash Emerald. I didn't actually play it on launch. I don't know why. I have no idea. I think I played it a little bit afterwards. I think I maybe went, I like I went so hard in the Johto slash Gold era of Pokemon that I think I might have just been a little bit burnt out on it. Because, yeah, I didn't get it on launch. But I did play it some time after and actually really enjoyed it. Anyway, Pokemon Diamond, really loved it. A great DS game. Um, and also, this was the year that the Wii came out. So, uh, I think... I can't remember if I got... No. I don't think I got the Wii on a midnight launch at game. Um, I think I picked it up, like, first thing in the morning. And I think I... I definitely had a day off work. Because um, I remember getting driven maybe there or, or something like that but I got the Wii and the Wii was great. The only real gaming related thing I remember in 2007 was Halo 3 so I seem to recall getting Halo 3 the special edition from Woolworths so yeah that's that's that dates this memory um yeah and I got into Halo 3 in a big way I just realized I I need to rewind because I didn't mention right back to the year 2000 slash 2001. It was around that time. That was the first time that I played online. Because um, we played Red Alert 2. I uh, played it online and that, playing a game online for the first time, absolutely blew my mind. Uh, that was mental, that I was playing with people over the internet. That was a crazy, crazy concept at the time. Fast forward back to 2007. So, um, now this is when I was playing uh, games online for the first time on a console. So, Halo 3, absolutely loved it. Got into Halo 3 in a big way and I thought it was great. In 2008, this is when I became a PlayStation fan. So, um, I had never been a big PlayStation fan up until this point, other than, you know, playing it at Mike's, which we did, you know, we did play religiously and I thought it was great. Um, I just didn't think they had anything that special, basically. Um, I did play one of the Final Fantasies, Final Fantasy IX, which I loved. Um, but there was there was no big standout PlayStation exclusive for me until Uncharted came out. Now, Uncharted looked like 
completely looked like my sort of game. Uh, I knew that I had to have it, and very simply, very, very simply, I was like, well, uh, yeah, I'm getting a PlayStation then. Uh, I think I asked for one for my birthday or something, or saved, saved up for one, and Claire helped me buy it, something like that. Um, but yeah, we finally got one, uh, along with Uncharted, so it wasn't on launch or anything like that, and I absolutely loved it. Brilliant. In 2009, that's when Uncharted 2 came out. So I got Uncharted 2, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Up until that point, certainly one of my favourite games of all time. I thought it was a masterpiece. Um, and I dominated the online. I was This is this is probably one of the video games where I, I've been the best at. Uh, like I've never been amazing at multiplayer games or online games. Um, but Uncharted 2, I was awesome at it. So it was really fun, and I played that quite religiously online. <coughs> I need to get a drink. I've been talking for like... 35 minutes. Actually, I should turn the camera off first. Though. So I can't be certain of the timing. I think this was around the time that I got a PSP as well. I don't have anything more to say about the PSP. Then we only need to rewind 10 years. Back to 2010. Um, this is when I think the, my favourite game of the year was probably Donkey Kong Country Returns. So Donkey Kong Country... It was one of the things that properly got me into gaming. It was one of the things that actually made me a, a video games fan. And they revived the series. And I remember at the time I was unemployed. So I lost my job at HBOS. Mass redundancies, don't worry. But I was young and stupid so I didn't look for a job straight away. And I blew my redundancy money and just fucked around. Stupid. Another big regret in life. Uh, but yeah, but fortunately, uh, during this time of unemployment, I got Donkey Kong Country Returns two days early from Shop 2. So I got it on the Wednesday. So I was absolutely delighted. Uh, smashed it, and it was brilliant. It was also around this time that I started playing Disgaea. So I think that probably was on the PSP and pretty much the only game worth mentioning on the PSP. Um, Disgaea, brilliant game. I still don't fully understand it to this day and all the madness that you can do in it. But it's sort of like a JRPG version of chess on steroids, sort of. Uh, and it's very funny as well. It's the funniest game I've ever played. Brilliant series. Um, I recommend it. Oh yeah, just checking my notes. It, this is also probably around the time I was playing Guitar Hero. Probably a little bit before as well. I was enjoying Guitar Hero. 2011, I only really remember one major thing from this year. Uh, and that is the 3DS. So the sequel to the DS came out. Now this, I definitely did get on a midnight launch. I remember going along to game uh, in the pitch pitch black, the shopping centre where they had opened it um, at that time. Picked up my, my turquoise 3DS, went home and played it for a bit and then went to bed. Um, so yeah, good console. Um, great, um, great technology, you know, an actual 3D screen without glasses. That, that was, so that was really cool to experience. And um, yeah, cool. Don't remember anything else too crazy about that year. In 2012, I got a PS Vita. PS Vita was a, a really smart bit of kit. The technology seemed great. Graphics really solid and a nice dual stick, uh, portable device. Just a lovely bit of hardware. Uh, this is also the year, I believe, that the Wii U came out. Um, and this was the first Nintendo console. Because as you would have heard, I, what, I got the Wii on launch. I got the GameCube on launch. Um... And I, got, I think I got the N64 pretty soon after launch. So I had been a die-hard Nintendo fan for a long time. Um, and, yeah, this was the first one where I was like, hmm, this is slightly shit. Um, yeah, that console, mm. In 2013, The Last of Us came out, which is, of course, the best game ever made. So that was a very significant date in everyone's video game diary. I can't be explicitly certain on the timing of this one, but I, th I think it was this year. 2014, Super Metroid was re-released on the Wii U. Probably the best thing that ever happened to me on the Wii U, actually. Um, I'd never played it. I've, I'd always been aware of it, but I think I'd always sort of... Because of the back and forthy nature of Metroid games, I'd always been a bit... Uh, I think it's going to be a bit, a bit overwhelming for me, because up until this day, age, I'd also never been into Zelda games. Because I, I, generally speaking, I prefer linearity, linearity, straight, straightforwardness in games. Um, I like to be told where to go and go A to B, uh, or just a ball rolling down a hill. I can only go one way, sort of thing. Um, and I thought that Metroid would overwhelm me a bit with the back and forth. And also, I'd never been a big fan of like shooters, like two D shoot shooters. Um, but I was like, yeah, you know what? It looks good. I'm, I'm gonna play it. 
So I played it, what, 20 years or however long it was after its original release. And I couldn't believe that I'd never played it before. I honestly thought it was completely timeless, and I still think that to this day. I think I think it's a big shame that the companies have... The, 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 the big companies, like the AAAs, have sort of moved entirely away from sprite-based gaming or, you know, retro-style graphics. Not everything has to be new. It, like, a realistic-looking game should just be part of the arsenal. And sometimes the type of game that you're making might suit that very well. Sometimes the type of game that you're making might suit sprite-based um, graphics better. So I, I wish that it hadn't disappeared. Because they are so timeless. And I played Super Metroid and I absolutely loved it. I fell in love with it. Now, I had actually played a little bit of Metroid Fusion back in, I think, 2003. But I never, I thought it was alright and never really got on with it. Ne I never really clicked or I didn't get that far into it. Something like that. But with this, I just, I was like, oh my god, this is, this is sensational. And then I believe they released Fusion on the 3DS as a port. Not a port, as a download. Um, and then I bought Metroid Zero Mission on the Game Boy Advance and played that on one of my old consoles. I think I actually played it on a Game Boy Micro that I had around this time. Um, so yeah, basically I hugely got into Metroid and absolutely loved it. The It has atmosphere, uh, you know, alone on a space station in space. Uh, the character designs are amazing and the level of progression you're constantly unlocking stuff that makes you feel so badass. So it's such an awesome, awesome series. And uh, it was actually the intro to Super Metroid that got me. You you like go down in the space station or whatever, you go, go into this room and you're like, oh, wow, shit's gone down here. And then the whole thing starts shaking and it gives you like three minutes to get out. You're like, what, fuck? So straight away, it hooks you. Brilliant series. And that is, what, yeah, I came to the series late, but I'm glad that I finally got there. I think there were a couple of significant things that happened around 2015. First of all, I played Destiny, got into Destiny. Uh, as I'd been a previous fan of Halo, I was excited um, that I was going to be able to play on uh, play a Bungie game on what was now my preferred console, PS3? Was it PS3? Yeah, I think so, but I'm not certain. I think it was PlayStation 3, right? It might have been PlayStation 4. I don't really know. But anyway, PS3 was now my preferred console. I pretty much didn't use my uh, Xbox by this point. In fact, the for a long period of time, it was actually a little bit before this, but for a period of time, the Xbox 360 HD DVD drive, yes, I know I bought that, uh, was purely used as the platform to give the PlayStation 3 enough enough height for the cable to reach into the TV. True story. Um, I bought that. I bought, yeah, I bought one of those. Anyway, I got into Destiny, got into online gaming again with the headset action and, and raid battles. So I'd never played WoW. So I was sort of unfamiliar with these big raid battles. And with, uh, with, excuse me, with Destiny, I thought it was fascinating how you had to have a specific game plan down and tactics and everyone having their own role still to this day I just think that is some of the best the best fun I've had and the, the sort of communal spirit of playing a raid with your friends knowing that you've done a good job and then at the end of it getting rewards that were just absolutely sick and the excitement of getting those cool guns and cool armor oh shit, shit. Fuck. My yeah oh you fucking king you fucking pig! Next fucking mythoclast! That's how you fucking do it! Great stuff. And the other big thing that happened this year is I started playing Hearthstone. So I've now been playing Hearthstone for five years. Um, yeah, basically, previously in my life, uh, I'd been into Pokemon cards and I'd been into Magic, Spor Magic the Gathering sporadically. Um, and I was on Theme Fest, which you can see on this very channel. You can see the fun that we all have at Theme Fest. Uh, I was at Theme Fest, and Mike told me about Hearthstone. Uh, and I was like, "What this? Like a, basically a free version of a collectible card game on the phone." It was exactly what I, I had looked for, and it's a t genre of game that I'd really enjoyed because I'd actually played some digital. Uh, I mean, the Pokemon trading card game on Game Boy is fucking awesome um, and I really enjoyed there was a couple of Yu-Gi-Oh games on DS that were absolutely brilliant um, but this was a free version that I could play on my phone with people online 
perfect. Just what I was looking for. And I couldn't believe that I hadn't heard of it. I think it had been out for at least a year at that point. Couldn't believe I hadn't heard of it. And I absolutely love it. And I love it to this day. I play it pretty much every day. Just looking at my notes. Actually, it's, it's probably I've probably not played a game more than Hearthstone, actually. Um, 2016. Uncharted 4. The best Uncharted game. Phenomenal achievement. Um, unbelievable graphics. Good. In 2017, we're getting really recent now, this video is nearly over, which is good because my voice is absolutely fucked. Um, in 2017, the Nintendo Switch came out. I remember they actually revealed it very close to the release of the console, which was a breathtaking thing for not only the games industry, but also Nintendo. So absolutely brilliant. Uh, and it looks amazing. It really did look like they had refined the Wii U. It looked exciting, and it came out, and it was absolutely brilliant. So once again, you know, it had been such a long time since I was super excited for a Nintendo console. Because uh, even the 3DS was good, but it, it still wasn't as good as the DS, and it didn't have those heavy hitters. So, uh, you know, what, it had been probably a good 12 or 13 years since the last really good Nintendo console. But they were finally back, and it is brilliant. In 2018, I think the main or biggest thing is Spider-Man PS4 came out. I'm a massive Spider-Man fan. I mean, there's loads of Spider-Man villains and Spider-Man figures right there. Um, yeah, you know me. If you're watching this video, you know me. You know I love Spider-Man. Um, my voice is absolutely fucked. Uh, yeah, absolutely love Spider-Man. Uh, and this game, you know, Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man on PS1, they're such renowned games that I had played. Um, actually, Spider-Man 2, the movie game on PS2, that was the one that I'd really played and absolutely loved. And nothing quite captures the fun of swinging through New York City with Spider-Man. And we were finally getting a updated gen version of that game. Um, sorry, I'm not saying it was a new version of that game, it was a brand new game. Um, and it looked amazing, and it was amazing. It actually became one of my favourite games of all time. So it probably sits in the top five around now. It's probably somewhere like number three of my favourite games of all time. Um, but it was everything I wanted. Uh, loads of unlockables, loads of costumes, which is what I love about Spider-Man as well. Um, good villains, although it could have had more villains is my biggest um, criticism. But loads of gadgets as well. It played off the intelligence of Peter Parker as well as the kineticism uh, and the the web swing, swinging and sl web slinging. Uh, they got it perfectly right. It feels amazing. Um, oh. Damn, man. Fucking love that game. Wow, I've really started swearing more towards the end of this video. I need to stop that in case small people watch it. Right, 2019. Literally just last year. <sighs> I can't really remember that much happening. I mean, there's been some significant Switch releases in the last few years. I think Odyssey was maybe the year before 20, the year before that, right? Which was absolutely brilliant. I loved that. Um, but something happened in 2019. Pokemon Sword and Shield came out. Throughout my adult life, I'd always been pretty excited for Pokemon games. Like I said, I think Ruby and Sapphire was actually the only gen that I didn't play on launch. Every other game I'd got on launch. But Pokemon Sword and Shield came out, and I realised that the last two or three generations had all been absolutely shit. That's why I didn't mention them. Didn't mention Black, didn't mention White, didn't, make, didn't mention X, X and Y. Um, it don't matter if you're black or white. Ow, Shamon! Hee <laughs> hee! Ah, he, he was a paedophile. Yeah, I played Sword and Shield, and I just realised, I was like, this... Yeah, it took me... The, the weird thing is, it took me some time to even realise it, because I was playing through the game, and I was like, oh yeah, this is cool, I'm enjoying it. But then, lots of, lots of things just seeped in. Um, I hate the colours. The colour palette of the Pokemon is completely washed out. You know how I said that one of my favourite gaming memories was playing Pokemon on Game Boy Colour because I got to see all of my favourite Pokemon in bright, vivid colours for the first time? Well, that's gone because the colour palette is now completely washed out watercolour. Nonsense. It looks awful. I mean, look at this comparison between Pikachu from Game Boy Colour Pokemon Gold and Pikachu on the new games. He's buff. He's practically white. Um, and, like, the details crap. The... The towns are soulless. It's all just it's all just nonsense. It's bad. It's, it was far too easy. And the Pokemon designs are absolutely shit. I could design a better Pokemon design with my... And this is true. I could design a better Pokemon with my eyes closed. The reason I know this is true is because I did it. I wish I still had the proof. Maybe I'll do it again. 
Um, but I did it at work one day. I, I was like, these fossils, these new fossils, they're so bad I could design one better with my eyes closed. And I did. And I, I actually think I succeeded. So maybe I'll do it again. But uh, yeah, it was a shame. It is a shame, guys. One of my favourite franchises of all time. And I realised that the last few have been crap. And that was the worst among them. I absolutely hate Pokemon Sword and Shield. I honestly think they're just shame. I think they're shameful. But we now reach present day 2020. My voice is just completely gone. It's brilliant. I've been talking for nearly an hour. Yeah, we reached 2020. And I don't want to leave this video on a sour note. But how possibly could I? It's 2020. This has been an exceptional year for gaming. The Last of Us Part 2 came out. It is one of the best games I've ever played. It is a masterpiece in storytelling and also just a, the way it makes you feel. It's such a mature game. And it's so appropriate that, that I'm ending on 2020 uh, and this game came, came out that honestly feels like the most mature video game ever made. Um, it's commentary on, on um, social things and current events and whatnot. Um, and on top of all that, the gameplay is, gameplay is absolutely brilliant and the characters are amazing. Um, it is a masterpiece uh, and obviously it garnered loads of criticism because of stupid, ignorant people. Uh, I can understand not liking the game, but um, yeah, fine. I loved it. It was it was sensational. And next week the PS5 comes out in the UK, so it's just come out in America or in the rest of the world. And yeah, we get it next week. I've got mine on pre-order, so I can't wait. And I get to play Miles Morales, so the the sort of spin-off follow-up to my favourite or what? Sorry, one of my favourite games of all time. Uh, I am so excited, guys. I've even bought a special hoodie to wear on the release of the PS5. Maybe I'll do like a special vlog about that week or that day or whatever. Um, but I am really excited, guys. So that is how I became a gaming fan, got into gaming, and all the significant events revolving around gaming in my life. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I think I probably have forgotten tons, because obviously I've played more than just those games, even though that took long enough to talk about. Um, yeah. What about the future, guys? Let me just round out this video by talking about what's what's happening. Um, there's not actually that much on the horizon I'm excited for, to be honest. Donkey Kong Country 3 should get re-released on Switch fairly soon on the SNES Online. I'm really looking forward to playing that. Um, I've got a few items on my bucket list. You might have watched my bucket list video, so I'm doing a few things on there. I've been playing Rocket League recently and really enjoying it. Again, it's been a, it's been a little spell since I did online gaming, uh, online gaming on console. It's been a couple of years. So it's good to, to do that again. Fall Guys came out this year, so that's good. I'm, I'm talking about the present again instead of the future. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's not many games actually on the horizon that I'm really excited for. Basically, guys, right now, I'm excited to hear the announcements. I want to see a, a full-blown Spider-Man sequel. So Spider-Man 2, I would assume it will just merely tie Miles and Peter together and have both of them in it as a... Uh, as forefront characters that you play uh, and maybe beyond that as well uh, so I'll be looking forward to that when it eventually debuts probably in about a one to two years time I would expect uh, we've got a new uh, we've got a new Breath of the Wild on the horizon so I'll definitely get that because Breath of the Wild was fantastic on the Switch first uh, Zelda game that I really properly enjoyed um, and the big thing actually is Metroid um, I did actually play the original Metroid Prime, and uh, I did enjoy it, even though I said that I got into the Metroid uh, franchise in 2014. Um, I did actually play M Metroid Prime, and I enjoyed it, but it's a completely different style of game. Um, but now that I'm a fan of Metroid, I can't wait to replay Metroid Prime, and play Prime 2 and Prime 3 for the first time. Um, I don't like motion controls though, um, which those two came, or certainly the third one came with motion controls. Um, so I'm so excited to play those games again on the Switch. Um, I really can't wait because it's, it, you know, this is a game, the re release of that is not confirmed, but it's been long rumoured for absolutely ages. And also, they're bringing out Metroid Prime 4 which also I'm really looking forward to, but I really need to play the original trilogy. So I'm hoping they release that soon on Switch, as well as just focusing more on their franchises. The frustrating thing with Nintendo is they've got so many franchises and they're just not bringing games out at the moment. There hasn't been a Nintendo Direct in well over a year. We've had the specific like Mario Directs and Pokemon Directs and whatever. But I want to hear a load of new um, announcements from Nintendo and from PlayStation. And you know what? I'm looking forward to the new Halo as well. I'm undecided on if I'm going to get an Xbox One 
an Xbox Series X, X VY next year, but I, I'm strongly considering it, guys. <sighs> I'm pooped. Thank you very much for watching. Give this video a like. Uh, actually, if this video gets 100 likes, my throat will feel better. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome to Theme Park Life, my name's MJ and today I'm going to talk about video games, their impact on my life, my biggest memories revolving around video games and uh, I already hate this video. <laughs>